Readiness is a state of mind. We, as the three power battle group, are at extreme high readiness to deal with any crisis. We are the tip of the spear, the army's global response force. Okay, at the highest I'm the two I see with the battalion. I'm very much the CEO's right hand man. Commander of battalion is a lieutenant colonel. I'm literally the next person down on the hierarchy. So imagine the CO is like a major pop star. So the CO could be Eminem. I'm his Dr. Dre. One zero, stand by. The need to inflict violence is a necessary evil. <laughs> We are ready to really do the nation's dirty work, should that be called for. We are on a very, very short notice to move timeline. So within a matter of hours, I could be asking paratroopers to jump into combat situations overseas or in response to a terror-related incident. It sounds bad, but we just want to go to war because our job is the profession of war. We're not warmongers. We're not sitting there going, I just want to shoot people. It's the fact that bad people in the world are doing bad things. All we need is a bit of water, a bit of food, and some bullets, and we're good to go. We're like the dogs of war on leashes. And right now, I feel like the owner trying to hold them back. But when you say go, I'll let them go. We went to Afghanistan in 2006. We were fighting for our lives uh, day and night for the six month period. And I'd honestly say it was probably the best time of my life. If you broke the news to me now that we were going to war in a couple of hours, I'd be absolutely buzzing. It's what the blokes are craving. It's what the blokes want to do. It's what they join for. The blokes are fighting men and they want to fight. Wiley, Wiley, you haven't shaved this morning, have you? No, an idiot, mate. Wiley, come here. Come here. Come here. What's wrong with you? What? I don't understand what goes through your head. Unfortunately, some of the blokes these days don't realise that they're in the army. They think they're just here for a picnic holiday. And he's one of them. Corporal Denikovich has been a paratrooper for 16 years and served in Iraq and Afghanistan. He lives in the regiment's manned quarters, just outside the garrison's perimeter. Come here. Don't piss me off the most about this morning. I said to you, why have you not shaved? And what did you say? Because you, you got up late. Yes, correct. Is that an excuse? Is that genu genuinely, is that an excuse? No, no, no. So you do understand why you're here then, yeah? Yes, correct. Yeah. yeah. If we get caught by the enemy, in an ambush, is his, is his weapon going to stop firing because he's not oiled it? Because he's not shaved, so is he gonna, he's not going to have oiled his weapon and prepped his weapon, is he? Right, do you think I want to be here at fucking 2200 hours on a fucking Friday night when I've got my wife sat in there, yeah? And I'm stood outside here dressed in uniform when I've been in civvies all day, I got stood down at 12 o'clock and now I'm fucking back in uniform dealing with you. I grew up in Manchester, uh, just me and my mum. My dad obviously just thought that the grass was greener on the other side and the last time I seen him, I'd been to his house for the weekend and he said to me, so what time do you want me to pick you up next week, son? He told me to go inside um, and he said to my mum, yeah, I'm done. I don't want nothing to do with him anymore. Show me your sleeping bag. Get in it then. You're a big tall lad. They might have issued you one that's too small. Need to check. I've got a duty of care. Do you not think that's a bit small? Where do you lose the most heat from? Uh, forehead, head. From your fucking head? What's sticking out? My head. Yeah. So therefore, it's fucking too small then, isn't it? My next door neighbour was in the parachute regiment 
and I used to see him coming home on leave and you know he had the best gear on you know he always had money in his pocket and he, was, he had like he had a, an aura about him he had a swagger and he always had the time of day for me as well sleepy bag liner come over here it's all right, isn't it? I remember used to like watch him out the crack of the curtain coming back in off, off a night out, absolutely like baggage, like and uh, stumbling into his house and that. And I was just remember looking out the window thinking, yeah, I got a piece of that. Basics done well. Is that not what we do in the Porsche Regiment? Every morning, you look yourself in the mirror and be like, am I going to be a dick today or am I going to be a paratrooper? This event is about mental robustness, all right? Stick with it. It's long, but stay with the pace. To be ready for war, the Parachute Regiment needs a constant supply of recruits. But first, they have to pass the most brutal training course in the British Army. Private Kojo Bremer failed in his first attempt at passing the course. Right, put your body armour the right way round. Like it's inside out. You'll learn the hard way, Joe. Right, stop there, Bremer. It shouldn't take you about 45 attempts to put the bolt in, should it? I was in the shits, you know, I was doing bad. I knew I was doing bad. And then I'll just wake up thinking, oh, what am I going to fuck up this time? Did I show you how to fold a map correctly? Do you think you folded it correctly? Right, you haven't folded it correctly. Because you're a fucking dick. I just feel ashamed to admit it because the day I got back squatted and I feel like I've let myself down. I knew it was coming. It was just about how am I going to, you know, mend myself and do better. Private Kojo Bremer was given a second chance in a new platoon. You need to really show that mental and physical capacity that we're looking for for you to be able to join the parachute regiment. You can't make any mistakes here. And if your name's already cropped up in conversation as being questionable as to whether they should go to battalion, that's when all eyes will be focused on you. A great start. He's now made it to week 20 of the 28-week course, known as P Company. It's a punishing week of endurance, unique to the Paris. OK, stretch the race, casual evacuation. OK, this is probably the most important event for us. Paratroopers do not jack on each other. You jack today, you're telling us that you will jack in the future. Private Bremer's career is slightly hanging in the balance. When he arrived in my platoon, you could definitely see that there was, you know, there's some hesitation, a lot of nerves. Don't look at me looking stressed, you get it picked up. Right, get straight away, straight away. You know, as a paratrooper, we're, we're looking for something a bit more, and that's being comfortable in chaos. Straight away, now, P Company is the judge, jury, and executioner of you becoming a paratrooper. Push. 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 That's when they weed out the weak, the ones who are not mentally resilient, physically robust, determined. Growing up as a teenager, I did struggle to find a place I belonged. It got to a stage where I totally just shut myself down, isolated myself and just became a lone wolf. I felt very low. I thought to myself, wow, you know, is this how useless I am? There were some of you that have made that by the fucking skin of your teeth. All right, if that was real life, that guy would have been dead because the fucking effort that you weren't putting in because you were a little bit tired. I want to pass this. To me, it's a title to be earned by any means necessary. You know, if that means two broken legs, a broken arm, a smashed in face, yeah, then so be it. The final event of P Company is a test of a recruit's courage called milling. This will ascertain whether you have the fucking balls to be in the airborne forces. It's 60 seconds of controlled aggression, striking the target area, which is the face. <laughs> Be one crazy fucker to come here. Draw. Yeah. 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 
The fact that I'm actually doing something I've dreamed of as a kid, I'm not going to settle halfway. Good effort, both of you. Skin's just. Yay! I've been given a second chance to redeem myself, and I'm not going to leave here without the maroon beret on my head. I'm not. It's just, it's just something I cannot do. Readiness is something that's relatively unique to the parachute regiment. I, for example, am on eight hours notice to move right now. If I get a call today, then I'll probably have time to get changed, get my stuff and get in the car, and that's it. I've got to get back to Colchester. But it's your wedding day. I know it's my wedding day, but it, it just being on readiness doesn't stop. On the streets of France again, armed police are rushing to a supermarket in a small town near Toulouse. It's Sos Law on my wedding day. We've got a terror incident just come to a close in France. We've got rising tensions with Russia and uh, the aftermath of a chemical attack in Salisbury. So, uh, yeah, I'm constantly keeping an eye on that today. Um, I'm hoping Putin doesn't invade <laughs> anywhere. I'm hoping there's no more chemical attacks. I'd be very grateful if I could be unmolested for the next 12 hours of my, of my wedding day. Then, sort of tomorrow, I'm good to go again. So, yeah. Getting married to somebody in the military and all of the sort of potential sacrifices, being prepared that he may not be able to make it through the wedding, he may have to leave as soon as we're married. People would see that as a sacrifice, but I don't because it's part of who he is. Hopefully he won't get called away, but there is a chance. As long as we legally get married and sign that document today, then I'm happy. It's part of the burden Maddie brought in too. But getting married today, there's three of us in this marriage. There's me, there's her, and there's the parachute regiment. Regime. Colonel. <laughs> How you doing? That's very small. Yeah, perfect. So pass muster, Colonel? Definitely. Thank you very much. Lucky lady. <laughs> <laughs> My parents discouraged me from joining the army. Back then, you know, Northern Ireland was still quite a, you know, troublesome place to, to serve in. They thought if I joined the army that I'd get blown up in Northern Ireland. I've had to face my own mortality on a number of occasions. So does it scare me? Probably. I'm more scared of what it will do to the people I'll, I'll leave behind if I'm killed, to be honest. Marriage is where each partner is there to support each other in all that they do. It's Judgment Day for Private Kojo Bremer. He's about to discover if he's past P Company and earned the Paris coveted maroon beret. Well done. Everyone stood in front of me now, you've all achieved something, yeah? Pass or fail, unfortunately there are some failures as there always are. It doesn't fucking matter. Hold your head up high. Be proud of yourself for just getting through. Without further ado, um, I will go through the pass and fails. Number one. Sir. Pass. Sir. Number two. Sir. Pass. Sir. Number three. Sir. Fail. Number seven. Sir. Pass. Sir. Number eight. Sir. Pass. Sir. Number nine. Sir. Pass. Sir. Number ten. Pass. To hear that number eight pass is a huge feeling. 
it's a feeling that you can't, you just can't contain. It's just, you know, you, you just, you just, you feel like you just want to explode. You know, you've evolved from this worthless piece of shit to something decent, to something that's elite. Good, sir. Good, sir. Good, sir. Happy, sir. Good, sir. Thank you, sir. Private Kojo Bremer passed the Paris training course, winning the prize for best endeavor. From now on, he'll live in Colchester, inside the regiment's garrison. But he faces one final hurdle before he can become a fully fledged paratrooper. My gents, you are no longer Joes, you are Toms, all right? You are not a normal private soldier, you're a paratrooper, and with that comes a bit of responsibility, okay? Everything that you do now, I need you ready to go to war. If I get the call now, any one of us here could be jumping into Syria, for example, on Friday. So understand the implication of that on your lives. Private Kojo Bremer, Sir. you will start jumps course on Monday, all right? Understand military parachuting. Uh, it stresses your body like being hit by a car at 20 miles an hour. All right, you'll have to do that five times on your jumps course. There is a one in 20 chance that you will be seriously injured, okay? Touch wood, I'm um, overdue an injury, you'll be fine, but it is complicated. If any of you have got girlfriends, lucky them, all right? But you need to explain to them the implications of you going away. And if something unfortunately happens to you, understand that you've got a plan there in place, all right? So. When we went to Helmand in Afghanistan for the first time, it was the first time I'd had a guy killed on operations uh, under my command. Some of our guys ended up in a unmarked minefield. And I knew a few of the lads had been hit. And the sort of the Chinooks were flying back in with, you know, with all these guys who'd been wounded. And then there's a number of lads, legs missing, and I walked in to the back of the Chinook, and I could see a body back on the right. And the Sergeant Major opened it, and he went, Nick, I think it's one of your blokes. And I was like, yeah, it's Mark. I reckon he just looked like he was asleep. And that was a big shock to me, like a big shock. First time I'd lost anyone on operations. And I knew, and he was engaged to get married, and he was family. So yeah, well, I was like, okay, right. I need to, I need to think. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break this to the blokes, and, and you know, I've got, to, I've got to face his family and his fiance when I get back home. And, and that, that, that was hard. Fighting operations is second nature to the parachute regiment. In the last 40 years, they've been deployed in Northern Ireland, the Falklands, Afghanistan, and Iraq. Today, one of the biggest threats to peace comes from escalating tensions between Russia and the West. The Paras must work together with their NATO allies to prepare for any military emergency. We're deploying as part of an American battle group, so they're bolting our company into an American battle group headquarters. This is our chance to show ourselves off to our major strategic partners on a global scale. Okay, so it's a really big deal, fellas. Thank you. Uh, the purpose of this exercise, right, was going to America first. Um, we're going to bed in with our counterparts, and then we'll jump into Latvia, which is on the border of Russia. So it goes without saying that's just like a show of force from ourselves and the Americans that we've got a far reach and there's not many places in the world that we can't get to. Next. I think that's the hardest part of the job, being away from home. Thank you. Next. Hold on, you're beating me. And I think everyone with family would agree, but everyone in the Paris wants to go away. There is a safety card in the seat pocket in front of you or to the side of you. In terms of Russia, they are absolutely able to carry out dark arts, you know, such as the Skripal poisoning or 
you know, the, the shooting down of the, the airliner. If they rolled over the border into a Baltic nation, that's a NATO country. The NATO treaty says that we have collective defence. That means America would be at war with Russia if they invaded Latvia or Lithuania or Estonia. So we're showing that we can project into Latvia from America very quickly. Got it, thank you. You know, this is a chess game, uh, and we're just a, we're a piece in the chess game here. For the next month, the Paras will be working together with U.S. airborne troops based in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. It's the largest military base in the world. Coming to America and seeing how they idolize their military is an eye-opener for us. And it does make you think, oh, you know, I wish the public loved us just as much as the American public loved them. On the Latvia mission, the British and US paratroopers will have to jump from a plane carrying kit weighing more than their body weight. Over the next few days, they'll do practice jumps in the hope no one gets seriously injured. You're flapping. Pretty much. Do you ever worry about dying in service? No, if, if, if I die, then I'm dead. Uh, what am I going to know about it? Don't be worried, brother. We got this. I'm not worried, I just want to get the shit over. Yeah, yeah. My family, my family will be gutted, or well, I hope. Um, but obviously, if, if I die doing what I love, then, you know, I've died like a, like a soldier's death, haven't I? It's, it's, it's been good. I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to, snapping both my legs and my spine. Anyone else? <laughs> Is this double sewn portion must be facing back towards the metal. The paras will have to adapt quickly to using the American T-11 parachute, which they are not used to jumping with. There are concerns about its reliability, which the US military strongly disputes. So if you were to end up in the trees or in the water, you'd have a really hard time getting this off before you were in trouble, all right? Obviously, the LLP, our British parachute, is the best in the world. By far, hands down, the best parachute. We all know that, don't we? The one we've got on my back now, the ones you guys have got, the T-11, has been prone to have malfunctions. People have died with this parachute. Not trying to scare you, trying to say that we know the risk, don't we? That's the risk we take as paratroopers. We don't care. I can see it in your eyes, we do not mind. When you went left in that careers office and said parachute regiment, and the rest of the crap hats went right because they wanted an easy, lazy life, that was when you changed, and that's why you're the men you are today. Is everybody happy with that? OK, good. Off you go, fellas. Do you feel nervous using this parachute? What, what is nerves? I don't feel nerves. This emotion we talk about. You don't show your emotion, do you? You know, with, you have to put a hard front on. When, we, when we're actually walking onto that plane, people's asses will be going a little bit. Yeah. You know, you're a thousand feet up in the air, so there's always something that could go wrong. So it's always in, always in the back of your head, isn't it? But you've got a job to do, so you just have to do it, don't you? All the blokes in the sea company are more than aware of how dangerous jumping this American shoot can be. Thinking about having a good exit, giving yourself the best chance possible. People have died on this shoot at the end of the day, so that's always going to be in the back of your mind somewhere, but it's your job just to push it out.
What just cool. happened up there then? Um, so when you get out with a CH-47 helicopter, you count to 8,000. After the 8,000 count, you look up, but I could already tell I've been twisting. And high twist is a, is a malfunction. If they're high enough, then the canopy won't fully open, which means you fall too fast, which means you break your legs. Did you have to pull your reserve? No. That is a hideous crate. So you, you fucking better make sure you, you need to pull your reserve. But, yeah. What's a crate? It's quite a bit for the blokes. Red, drone! 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, check canopy. To qualify for military operations, new paras like Private Kojo Bramer must first earn their wings by parachuting out of a plane on their own. Hips facing me, shoulders facing me, stand by. Arms down here. Oh, I'm doing good, yep. Go! Uh, a little bit more. Yep. Spin round, grab your cat, work your way down, top D rings, what? Rose off. Lift up the what? Dust cover. The dust cover to what? CRU. CRU. Can you release you in it? Careful, that's the riser. The riser. Oh. Yep. Fucking hell. Oh, fuck. See. Oh, no, nah, messed up. It's very relentless. It's just, you know, you, you've got information that's flooding down at you. And um, you all just try and take everything in. And then your head's just spinning. Just don't lose your nerve, all right? Don't lose your bottle. That's when injuries come in, and that's when people start getting hurt, all right? Because it's career-ending stuff sometimes. So just make sure you get it right. When I first told my mom I'd be joining the army, you know, she, she didn't really like it. And she thought I could do something better. But, you know, Anyone who knows me, if I want to do so, I'm doing it, no matter what. Happy. Yeah. I'm trying to be stoic, but I'm shitting myself. Come day of the races, you can't just, you know, uh, I can't jump out. Right, keep going to the edge, set yourself up for a side left hander. You know, that split second can make a difference. It can mean you're dead or your mates are dead. Beanie's tight. Go! And then it all comes down to what can you do to prevent that? It's not just fear which new paras must conquer. They must also cope with any hazards they might encounter during a jump. From a twisted parachute to trees, buildings and water. Right on. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, check canopy. Canopy's good for you in normal twist. On a check in below, it is clear. Stay alive and twist. Stay alive and twist. Stay alive and twist. On looking down to assess your drift, you see you're drifting forwards towards buildings. Forwards towards buildings. You have a malformed canopy. Look, locate, operate. Stay away, I'm in, I'm in, oh. stay away, I'm in, twist. Stay away, you're full yourself. Stay away, I'm pulling my reserves. Stay away, I'm pulling my reserves. Shoot me fucking up. Come on. Get my head on straight. I know what I'm doing. Stop flapping. Just breathe. Take my time. I can't afford to fuck this up. It can either cost me both of my legs, my spine, or put me in the grave. So, you know, it's, uh, it's serious at the end of the day. In America, the Paras are in the final stages of preparation for the joint airborne mission to the Latvian border with Russia. I think there's a unfair cliche about paratroopers that which basically just thugs. And you know, in case of war, break glass and release us. What I don't need is thugs. I need disciplined professional soldiers so we can go from one minute I'm telling you to kill that bloke to stop. The blokes are trained to employ violence on behalf of Her Majesty the Queen and the government. They are very good at inflicting that violence when it's appropriate. What they're also very good at is knowing when to rein it back. Once they land in Latvia, the airborne troops will deploy into a war game to simulate potential conflict with the Russians. The minute you're on the grounds, there's no high-fiving, 
There's no whooping and hollering and celebrating how fucking magnificently airborne you are. Okay? Get your weapon out, get off the drop zone quickly, and get on with this mission so we don't start taking casualties from the word go. I've faced down gunfire before. You would have to be a robot not to be afraid of getting shot at. You know, when you get the crack and the whistle of that, that bullet that passes really close to you, all you want to do is hit the deck and start digging in with your eyelids. Bravery is about overcoming fear and not, not giving into it. So the IT threat is one of the biggest threats that they're using. If you have a phone over there and you use it, they can use that against us in a sense of they ping it, pinpoint a location where you are and say, hey, this is a guy that's here that's British because he called back to a British number. So when we go over there, we're going to have to remove SIM cards. We're going to have to collect phones. OK, an example of what happened in Ukraine. OK, uh, a Ukrainian soldier, they pinged his phone. They pinged that he was texting. They pinged who he was texting to. This, this Ukrainian soldier then received on his phone uh, a photo of his missus walking through her front door with a message attached to it saying, hey, mate, your missus just got home. So if they know where you live, they can immediately start following your kids to school every morning, take photos of your kids in the playground, send them to you while you're on exercise. That's the threat you're putting your families and your loved ones under if you take a phone with a SIM card in it to lap you. Okay, it's that serious. How effective do you think you're going to be if you know that someone's watching your children while they go to school every day? Do you think you're going to be able to function as a soldier in the field with that worry over your head? It's very dirty tactics, yeah. You know, and all that's going to do is piss us off even more. You know, you don't want to poke the fire, do you? I mean, we're already aggressive human beings. That's why we are the parachute regiment. We're known for our aggression. Don't piss us off any more than you have to. Yeah. Not all the way, because it'd be thunder ass if you drink a full drink. <laughs> Do you know what these youngs are like? In the Porsche Regiment, you've got to try and, like, be an alpha male, and, and uh, you know, I took the whole work hard, play hard, you know, a little bit too much. <laughs> Unfortunately, when I drank, I got myself into misdemeanors that I shouldn't have done. <laughs> we was on a battlefield tour, and I had a fight with one of the other blokes in, in my platoon. Yeah. Are you, you jumping tomorrow? Yeah. You jumping tomorrow? No. Why not? It was like a misunderstanding, um, and I won, he didn't. <laughs> run the table, boys, run the table. All right, we got to run the table. Because he had injuries, I ended up in court-martial, where I received a three-month sentence in, um, in a military corrective training centre, and then uh, a reduction in rank, so I was a private again. And then there was another incident, and I went to court-martial again. And now, obviously, I've had to work my way back up. Do you get many refusals, dear? Like, jump refusals? Jump refusals? Uh, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Like, when you're on the plane and you refuse, what? you're done. Yeah. You're, you're leaving. Thankfully, since I've been married and, you know, I've had my kids, I managed to put that behind me and I just, I just don't bother drinking now because it's, it's just easier. Less, less time in and out of court, shall we say. You're, you're, making, make, you're just making these rules up and you're going to win. Last shot to the win. <laughs> Oh! Oh! Game over. <laughs> With some of the paras abroad on exercise, Major Nick French and his new wife Maddie have returned from honeymoon and are moving into the regiment's married quarters. This is one of the most important things I've I got the flag made at the start of my last tour in Afghanistan, the Taliban would make white flags with, with white and Islamic writing on, and quite often they were, um, uh, were booby-trapped, so it was quite difficult to take them down. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll match them at their own game, say, you know, we're not going to be intimidated by you, you know, come and try and take my flag down, because, because you won't do it. You all right with those muscles? Yeah, that's good. I've, I've really had to think hard about this in the last few weeks, because, you know, I'm on readiness to go on operations. So I could very easily get sent back to a similar place, um, you know, at very short notice. We have discussed this quite a lot. We kind of have spoken hypothetically. 
And I think it's a good thing as well. Yeah, like, I don't think you can marry somebody doing your job and not have had that conversation because you could die. I wrote a death letter to my parents to be opened if I was to be killed in Afghanistan. Um, they've never seen it. And I found it when we were unpacking the other day. All right, dated 18th of October, 2010. Um, Dad, uh, if you're reading this, unfortunately, I've got the good news. Clearly, I should have kept my rather large head down, but unfortunately, I didn't when the time mattered. Be under no illusion. I've loved serving in the parachute regiment, and I regret nothing. Please take some comfort in the fact that I've always tried to serve my country to the best of my ability. Please do not wallow in my passing. Well, not too long. I would like to think that I was also a good and loving son to you. All my love, Nick. So yeah, I found that, I found that quite hard to read. And quite hard to write? Yeah, yeah. I'm only ringing you now because obviously literally um, we're getting ready to go out the door, so we're going to be handing our phones in, so literally we've got... We're not going to have any comms with you or anything, OK? Uh, don't, well, just until further notice. I'm sorry, I love you. Love you too. Speak to you soon. Bye, bye. Right, bye. Right. It's not easy being away from, like, you know, your loved ones. Um, and for me, I found it got harder as you had children. When you throw children into the mix, it just intensifies everything uh, tenfold. Unfortunately, the job comes first for, for many of us and uh, people like miss out, don't we? We often miss, like, first things, like, you know, first words, first steps and that. Um, and they're obviously memories that you can never get back. There's two different sides to a paratrooper. You can't be who you are at home and be the same person on the battlefield it doesn't work. There's a big difference between what you see through the enemy and what you see if you're my son or you're my wife. I can't charge around my house with a bayonet in my teeth, but I can't run around the battlefield asking for cuddles. Father God, thanks for the chance to do what we do uh, best, to jump out of airplanes and to take it to the enemy. Lord, I thank you for my British brothers who are here with us uh, to, to train. We pray for a safe flight, a safe jump, and a safe exercise. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, fellas. Have a good jump. We'll see you on the plane. Oh, yeah. Have a good jump, lad, yeah? This jump, I think, for everyone here, this jump will be the best one of their career. Because um, it's the longest jump ever conducted by British forces, so it means something to the regiment, and it will go down in, like, in our history books. Not for an oldie. Want to fuck shit up. The Russian threat is very real. Right here, right now, Russia is the most likely and the most severe threat to the security of, of Europe and the EU and, and NATO. Is it a threat to the UK? Well, the chemical attack in Salisbury shows the Russians have the capability and the political will to do that. Six U.S. Air Force planes will be flying a thousand airborne troops halfway across the globe. The Russians 100% will know that there are paratroopers flying over the Arctic. To a degree, we want them to know that because it's a very overt demonstration that we can put hundreds of paratroopers on the ground within 24 hours anywhere on the globe. So you've got to be very careful about balancing this. What we don't want to do is then provoke an overreaction and escalate it into something that it wasn't meant to be. You get the 10-minute call, and once the 10-minute call comes, game face. 
and you're ready to go. Your legs are shaking from the weight. Just want to get out the door. So the Russian border is just over that way to the east. The ability to show that you can project your force is the absolute essence of military power. It's no good having an army if you can't do anything with it. And what Russia infers from that is their business. But what we've shown is that if we need to, we can drop a load of blokes at really short notice right on their doorstep. That's what they've got to look forward to if they decide to escalate. the aircraft and you know you are become entangled you have one attempt to get yourself out of the entanglement but what will negate that chance of a self-entanglement a good exit after almost a year of training private kojo bremer now faces the final hurdle to become a fully qualified paratrooper to earn his wings he must successfully parachute from an aircraft at a thousand feet do i see it the first jump's the big test no, it's the moment of truth. You can jump out of plane, happy days, crack on. If you can't, well, think of another career path. All right, let's pick your kit up then. Go out to play. Jumping out to that aircraft, you're jumping into the unknown. I do get nervous. To be honest with you, I'm scared. It's about, you know, showing them you're worth joining the Brotherhood, you're worth joining the regiment, because, you know, they don't want anyone that's a liability. Yeah. When you jump out of that, you know, C-130, if I overthink and hesitate, you know, that's me dead. Stand by. Check equipment. Check equipment. Action station. For me to, you know, become a paratrooper, I can say, you know what, I did this. I conquered it, it will be a massive achievement in my life. because I didn't hesitate, I didn't flap, I just jumped out. When they told me to jump out, it's a fuck me moment because, you know, I've just jumped out of an aircraft and it's not normal for an 18-year-old to do it. So, um, it, it's just, it's something that'll always be with me. I fantasize about, you know, being a soldier, like a little mini Rambo. Now I don't need to be watching all the action films thinking about, you know, uh, how cool would it be to do this? I'm living it and I'm doing it. And, you know, I'm very happy to be doing it. The 
There's a, a famous Latin phrase, civis pacem parabellum, if you want peace, prepare for war. Uh, Arsie got it tattooed on the chest. Armour! Coming round that way! This is as near as ready as we're going to be for war. That's like keeping a knife sharp. We need to keep that sharp edge because we are the country's insurance policy. And if that insurance policy wants to get cashed in, then we need to be ready to go. Yeah, just on the other side of that building. No, we're not just playing soldiers here because if you get it wrong, there are fatal consequences to what we do. At the end of the day, our job is to enact violence on behalf of the British government. That is what we do in a nutshell. If you don't have that violence within you, then, then you're not in the right job. Get on the fucking stretcher. We might be frowned upon and people will be like, oh, what army? We don't need an army, all this shit. Let's all just get along. But the reason I love this place so much is because I feel like it's one of the last like outposts of of hard men that are ready to do bad things to bad people. And we'll be the first ones to call the pope when shit hits the fan.